Continuamos con el punto 16, intercambio de puntos de vista con la Comisión sobre los cigarrillos electrónicos y el tabaco tratado térmicamente. En primer lugar, tiene la palabra, por parte de la Dirección General de Salud de la Comisión Europea, el señor Andrés Riz, por diez minutos. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for uh, invitation to this important uh, discussion. So let me start from the short presentation about the state of play on uh, electronic uh, cigarettes and, and uh, heated tobacco. I hope it will go. Oh, it's coming. Okay, so as you uh, remember, the uh, tobacco product directive became fully applicable uh, four years ago in 2016, setting the rule for tobacco and related products as, uh, such as e-cigarettes. It is key piece uh, of legislation there of tobacco control, and one of its common aims is make tobacco and related products less attractive to young people. The directive is the first comprehensive legislation regulating e-cigarettes, and I think this is one of the first in the world. Expect, uh, outcome of the directive are to decrease tobacco consumption, strengthen the internal market, and assure the high level of health protection, particularly to young people. So why we decided to regulate electronic cigarettes? At the time directive has been drafted, there was a strong need to regulate these cigarettes. There were different rules across EU. For example, 40 member states reported that they regard some electronic cigarettes as medical products by function. Others had regulated them under tobacco legislation, and nine others had no specific rule in place. There was also strong market growth and uh, substantial uh, public uh, health concerns. Uh, as you can, can see, you know, just few of them, like a misleading information, uh, lacking information, like long-term effects, you know, some uh, quality issues, there were just few of them. We, 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 we uh, basically make us work and trigger this, this, this approach. Prevalence of use of uh, electronic cigarettes is quite significant. Uh, with 15, I'm referring to the uh, Eurobarometer studies from 2017, uh, 12 people having tried to use electronic cigarettes according to these studies. The figure is even higher for young people uh, with 25% of 15 to 24 years old uh, trying to use uh, electronic cigarettes. And this is also a phenomenon it's, it's, it's seen in the United States when uh, during the last uh, decades it was very uh, big uh, uh, reduce of, of, of cigarette consumption, but now they really see the similar phenomena in the high school students, you know, using more electronic cigarettes. Uh, I know many of you are concerned with the safety of electronic cigarettes. Just a few months ago, we have seen the U.S. serious adverse incidents linked to electronic cigarette use, which triggers strong public health measures in the U.S. coordinated by two U.S. agencies, U.S. FDA and CDC Atlanta. So how we regulate electronic cigarettes? Uh, why the EU also has seen adverse incidents linked to use of electronic cigarettes, which we continue to closely monitor, we can be proud that the Tobacco Product Directive has strangely, st stringent provision and strong framework for electronic cigarettes. For example, vitamin uh, E uh, excited, uh, which has been implicated in the U.S. case, is banned in the, in the EU. The directive prohibits use of vitamin or other addictives that create the Im impression of healthy benefits. We also have strong restrictions uh, limiting nicotine concentration to 20 milligrams per milliliter. The directive also introduces a prior notification which requires for manufacturers and importers to notify the product to the competent authority six months before placing it on the market. 
The directive does not harmonize all aspects surrounding electronic cigarettes. Many of those we, we, we are learning uh, during last years. For example, the use of cannabis extracts such as CBD is not harmonized in the, on the EU level. In the additional product safety, the popularity of cigarettes amongst young people continues to be a particular concern. Much of this success has been attributed to the wide variety of flavors available. The directive gives scope of member states to go beyond provision and introduce flavor bans of electronic cigarettes, which one member state has already done and others are planning to do so. Member states may also enhance the awareness at national level through their own campaigns. Several member states have strengthened information provision following reports on uh, adverse incidents from the US. Now a few words about heated uh, tobacco products in the TPD. Heated tobacco product contain, contrary to electronic cigarette tobacco, tobacco leaves, and, and regulated accordingly. The TPD introduced specific uh, procedures for so-called novel uh, tobacco products where uh, they are subject to prior notification or, or authorization by the competent authorities. As, you, as many of you are aware, so-called mental ban comes into force 20 of May this year where mental cigarettes and roll your own tobacco will not longer be permitted on the EU market in accordance with the provision of the directive. Why? Heated tobacco products are uh, fully covered by the directive. They are not currently exempted from this provision. Heated tobacco, what, what they bring, you know, this, 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 this new uh, novel uh, tobacco product. Aware of the, uh, the market potential, the Commission is monitoring those products carefully and gathering scientific information. Recently, we have observed third-party heated devices entering the market, which may impact considerably the emission profile of market tobacco products, marketed tobacco products. Those devices are often advertised in many member states. Frequently, those products are not in scope of national smoke-free regulations on non-smokers, including children, are exposed to their secondary hand emissions. Within the EU and internationally, several misleading messages have been promoted about those products, presenting them as a better alternatives, which challenging many regulators. Last year, during FCTC, the COP decision, uh, the COP, COP 8 decision initiated by the EU, it was requested an assessment of the products, which we this will be reported in a few months' time to so-called COP9, which will happen uh, this year in the in, 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 uh, Netherlands. There is a need to adopt the wording of all the FCTC guidelines with uh, aim to prevent circumvention of compre uh, comprehensive application of the FCTC. So have a look and the last, last two slides about the, 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 the work we are doing now to, to help to understand all these all this phenomena. As you remember, in the directive, Commission is required to report to the Parliament and Council by May 2021. 20, uh, the report from the implementation of the directive, we are in the preparatory phase. And uh, you can see the number of uh, issues we have to assess, including electronic cigarettes and uh, refill uh, containers, but also novel products and electronic uh, cigarettes as, uh, as uh, from the market development. So we are gathering data through different uh, sources of information. We, we do this through expert groups uh, of member states working together to join actions. Uh, we'll do Eurobarometer studies during this year uh, we also uh, uh, ask scientific opinion on electronic cigarettes and product perception study looking into is electronic cigarettes and uh, heated tobacco products. And finally, uh, the scientific opinion uh, of uh, SCARE, the scientific committee uh, on health, environmental and emerging risk. Committee was asked to uh, focus on uh, electronic cigarettes in the effects, uh, but also the cessation 
and initiate an element. You know, there are areas we would like to understand better, and we hope this will be uh, uh, published uh, the, for the public consultation in, in a few weeks' time, and uh, opinion will be concluded uh, by uh, September, October uh, this year, and will provide additional information to the report we would like to uh, present to you uh, as European Parliament in the Council as well. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias, señor Riz. Tiene ahora la palabra, en primer lugar, la señora McGuinness. Thank you very much, Chair, um, and thanks to the Commission for what is a very useful presentation of the state of play. Um, I have been asking questions about this issue, and of course we're all aware of what's happening in the United States. So it's good that uh, the European Union's um, directive has dealt with the issue of e-cigarettes, but not completely. One of the statistics that was quite interesting from the um, presentation was the number of young people that are vaping. And I suppose what will be interesting to know, and perhaps you have this information, is whether these are their first experience so that they may not have been smoking cigarettes, but they immediately start vaping because it's now acceptable perhaps within their group to do that. It will be interesting to know if that is the case. Clearly what happened in the United States was extremely worrying. Um, I am aware that some aspects of this directive are within the remit of the member state. And is that something we need to look at, that we have better harmonization um, of issues, as you mentioned, CBD, for example, uh, flavors, etc.? cetera? Um, is that something that we need to take a position on now, given the information we have here? Or are there any other aspects um, of the evidence we have found in relation to custom and practice on vaping that would guide us to make changes? Um, and will this come uh, in the report perhaps that is due next year? I think it's fascinating how rapidly vaping happened almost overnight. Um, and is this the tobacco industry's form of diversification? Do we have information on that? There was this week, um, or rather last week, uh, an interesting research report from an Irish maternity hospital, which found that women who vaped um, their baby size was the same as those who um, never smoked or um, had, had engagement with cigarettes. This is not to say that we would be promoting vaping to pregnant women, but it goes to show that there is research being carried out in different member states on vaping. And do we have any way of coordinating that research and getting the results fed into the process and the work that's taking place at the Commission. I'm very grateful um, with the pre that we've had this discussion and presentation um, because I do think we need to have a close eye on what's happening on the ground because none of us would have predicted that 25% of young people were vaping. That's not a statistic that I didn't think it would be this high. Um, and we do need to know the impacts on all sections of society and those areas where we're not clear on the um, additions, the flavours, the impact of these. So the risk assessment report would be very uh, important. It, it's rather a shame, though, that we have to wait for, I suppose, fieldwork, actual vaping, to guide us in our risk assessment. But I'm not sure it could be any other way. But certainly we need that information and we need it soon. Thank you. Muchas gracias, señora Baguines. Es ahora el turno del señor Lise. Ja, vielen Dank, Herr Vorsitzender. <coughs> vielen Dank an die Kommission. Aber ich möchte die Kommission schon bitten, entweder Herrn Ries oder jemand anders, der da ist, ich würde gerne ein bisschen genauer verstehen, was ist in den USA passiert. Denn das ist eine Frage, die Millionen von Menschen in Europa bewegt. Und die Antwort kann nicht sein, wir machen im Frühjahr mal eine Konsultation. Also da sollte die Generaldirektion Sante heute wissen, was ist falsch gelaufen, warum haben so viele Menschen einen Schaden durch die E-Zigarette erlitten und sind unsere Regeln so, dass das in Europa nicht passieren kann. Das, das finde ich, muss man nach Monaten, nachdem dieser Schadensfall passiert ist und nach mindestens drei Monate, nachdem die Anfrage vom Ausschusssekretariat kam, dass wir das hier diskutieren wollen, da muss es eine Antwort darauf geben. Und ich würde diese Antwort gerne hören von der Kommission. Vielleicht gibt es auch andere hier im Raum, die mir das gerne nachher erzählen können oder auch Leute, die das im Internet verfolgen und dazu Informationen haben. 
denn das ist die entscheidende Frage. Wir hatten heute Mittag in der Health Working Group eine Diskussion über die vermeidbaren Risiken bei Krebs. Und die Aussage war, wenn wir es überhaupt vermeiden können, sind 50 50 der Krebsfälle sind durch Rauchen verursacht. Da gab es überhaupt keine Informationen, dass E-Zigaretten Krebs erzeugen. So, und wenn wir jetzt den Krebs bekämpfen wollen, und wir haben die Möglichkeit, dass schwere Raucher umsteigen auf die E-Zigarette, dann sollten wir das nicht äh, erschweren, sondern ermutigen. Auf der anderen Seite müssen wir sehr, sehr klar sagen, wir müssen alles tun, damit Kinder, Jugendliche gar nicht erst anfangen, weder mit dem Rauchen noch mit der E-Zigarette. Aber ich wiederhole noch einmal, Herr Vorsitzender, wir haben reichlich Zeit. Wir werden heute deutlich vor 18.30 Uhr fertig sein. Und deswegen nehme ich mir die Freiheit, da jetzt auch wirklich etwas zu, zu sagen. Also, 50 der Krebsfälle werden durch Rauchen verursacht. Und wenn es möglich ist, durch E-Zigaretten das Risiko sehr, sehr stark zu reduzieren, denn dass E-Zigaretten Krebs erzeugen, hat jetzt noch keiner gesagt. Da müssen wir das genau untersuchen, genau wissen. Aber wir möchten die Leute natürlich nicht in ein Produkt schicken, wo es andere große Gesundheitsgefahren gibt. Und deswegen noch einmal die Frage, was ist in den USA passiert und haben wir das im Griff oder müssen wir da relativ dringend handeln? Muchas gracias, señor Lise. En efecto, el tiempo no es un problema, con lo cual el tiempo no es un problema, con lo cual el resto de oradores pueden disponer de él. Y voy a empezar a dar yo ejemplo porque tomaré la palabra eh, por parte de Sandy. Miren, en los últimos meses hemos asistido a una crisis derivada del uso de vapeadores, con varios muertos en Estados Unidos, uno en Bélgica y cientos de afectados. Entre 2011 y 2018, las tasas de uso del e cigarrillo entre los jóvenes en Estados Unidos ha pasado del 1,5%, 1,5% al 20, casi 21%. Por ejemplo, en España, en mi país, un informe del Ministerio de Sanidad ha, re ha revelado recientemente que la mitad de los adolescentes, entre 14 y 18 años, han consumido estos cigarrillos. Dos años antes eran solo uno de cada cinco adolescentes. La Organización Mundial de la Salud ha advertido en repetidas ocasiones de los impactos en la salud de este tipo de productos que califica de indudablemente nocivos y que socavan los esfuerzos de control del tabaquismo. Parece claro que la legislación europea no está adaptada a esta realidad que describen los datos. En la reunión del pasado 28 de noviembre del subgrupo sobre cigarrillos electrónicos, establecido por el Grupo de Expertos en Política del Tabaco, los expertos manifestaron un amplio consenso en que los líquidos que contienen cannabidiol o CBD pueden crear la impresión de que un producto tiene beneficios para la salud. Igualmente, algunos Estados miembros manifestaron en relación a los e-líquidos sin nicotina la existencia de un vacío legal al respecto, dado que no están cubiertos por la Directiva de Productos del Tabaco. También, en un documento de trabajo sobre la Directiva de 2011 sobre impuestos del tabaco, publicado la semana pasada, precisamente, la propia Comisión apuntaba que esta directiva ya no es apta para el propósito que fue diseñada y que es necesario un enfoque más amplio, que tenga en cuenta todos los aspectos relacionados con el control del tabaco, incluyendo salud pública, fiscalidad, la lucha contra el comercio ilegal, el medio ambiente, pero también, por supuesto, la nueva Agenda Europea contra el Cáncer. Todo ello apunta a la necesidad de una nueva regulación, tanto relacionada con los productos del tabaco como con los nuevos productos no nicotínicos. Por ello, para terminar, me gustaría conocer si la Comisión prevé modificar la legislación vigente en línea con las propias carencias que la Comisión, usted lo ha dicho aquí, ha identificado. Y, concretamente, me gustaría saber si prevé alguna acción regulatoria en relación a los CBD, así como si prevé afrontar el vacío legal identificado por los Estados miembros en relación a los e-líquidos sin nicotina. Y ahora tiene la palabra la señora Trilet Lenoir por Trilet Lenoir. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will take the floor in the name of my colleague Frederic Ries, who has been shadow reporter on the Tobacco Products Directive, and she uh, was she urged uh, to uh, draw questions to the Commission. Uh, but first of all, one little remark on toxic 
possible toxic effect of any product. Uh, talking about cancer, the date where you can suspect a toxic effect of a product is approximately 10 years after you've used it. So it might be a reason why we have right now no information and maybe we should not commercialize a product after having 10 years of experimentation, but that's the way it goes. So the four questions of Frédéric Bilaaf are, could the Commission confirm that no European cases similar of lung illnesses to those found in the USA have been reported amongst the member states, except for the Belgium case I'm pretty well aware of. Concerning the risk of e-cigarettes posed to non-smokers who start to use them, is the Commission ready to take new initiatives over the next few months to prevent the tobacco industry systematic targeting of younger and younger people? Could the Commission confirm studies, for instance, the one from the Public Health England, that show that in Europe, flavored e-cigarettes have contributed to a recent decline in adult smoking? And the final one, sorry, is as the Commission will report on the implementation of the Tobacco Products Directive in 2021, can you confirm that the balanced European approach will remain in, form, in force, namely to consider vaping devices as an efficient tool for stopping tobacco consumption and less harmful alternative to the traditional cigarettes? Thank you. Muchas gracias, señora Trinidad de Lenoir. Tiene ahora la palabra la señora Benue de Aidi. Benoit, perdón. Benue, me dicen. A la tercera. C'est pas grave. Monsieur le Président, mes chers collègues, la consommation de tabac a diminué de 6 points entre 2006 et 2017, selon l'Eurobaromètre. Une étude publiée dans la revue Addiction montre que la cigarette électronique est un moyen efficace pour quitter doucement l'usage de la cigarette traditionnelle. En France, la cigarette électronique est interdite depuis avril 2017 dans certains espaces publics, comme les établissements scolaires. Et d'ailleurs, on ne peut que saluer le renforcement de cette prise de position qui va bien sûr dans le bon sens. De plus, concernant le liquide qui, su qui subit une combustion, je souhaite rappeler à la Commission que de nombreux liquides non conformes aux normes communautaires circulent dans l'Union européenne via des trafics. Ils sont souvent d'ailleurs la source d'empoisonnement et d'intoxication. Je souhaite également vous rappeler l'existence de la drogue nommée Bouddha Blue. Cette drogue consommable via les cigarettes électroniques est un puissant cannabidoïde de synthèse. Elle expose particulièrement les jeunes européens et a déjà fait plusieurs morts. J'ai donc plusieurs interrogations. Que compte faire la Commission concernant le contrôle des produits qui rentrent illégalement à l'intérieur de l'espace Schengen Ensuite, quelle sera votre action contre le trafic de la drogue Bouddha Blue Je vous remercie. Gracias, señora Benier. Y ahora es el turno de la señora Rivasi de Los Verdes. Merci. Ben, comme l'a indiqué tout à l'heure la Commission, euh, je trouve qu'il est important quand même de distinguer ce qui est cigarette électronique et tabac chauffé. Parce que c'est quand même deux types de produits distincts. Euh, dans le cas du tabac chauffé, au contraire des cigarettes électroniques, ça contient du tabac et doivent donc se voir appliquer la même législation et la même fiscalité que les cigarettes traditionnelles ou le tabac à rouler. Moi, je crois que c'est important de le dire, et qu'on pourrait avoir aussi une fiscalité sur les cigarettes électroniques et leur recharge, à l'instar de ce qui a été fait en Lituanie, euh, pour être mis en œuvre. D'ailleurs, on parle beaucoup de la révision de la directive tabac, mais très peu de la révision de la législation de la fiscalité du tabac. Et elle est pourtant essentielle. Alors, je voulais savoir quelles étaient les intentions dans les prochains mois de la Commission dans ce domaine. Alors maintenant, ce qui nous intéresse quand même, c'est le lien entre cigarettes électroniques et santé. Et je me souviens d'un débat en 2014 sur la directive sur le tabac. Moi, j'avais beaucoup alerté sur le fait qu'il était anormal que la cigarette électronique soit comme un, un élément banal. J'avais dit, attention, on connaît très peu de choses sur les additifs chimiques utilisés, sur le fait qu'il y a des résidus liés à la combustion sur le fait qu'il y a des effets combinés. Et euh, 
euh, à l'heure actuelle, j'ai rencontré les professionnels de la filière qui disent qui reconnaissent leur ignorance et qui souhaitent en savoir plus sur les conséquences réelles de leurs produits. Donc je trouve que, euh, au niveau de la révision euh, de la directive, il faut être beaucoup plus draconien et on a autorisé des produits de façon beaucoup trop laxiste. Alors, à mes questions, la Commission a dit qu'il attendait un avis scientifique. Mais je trouve que, vous voyez, il a fallu attendre combien de malades. Parce que quand on regarde les chiffres, alors aux états unis il y a quand même, à l'heure actuelle, 2409 malades et 52 morts, plus euh, le mort au niveau de la Belgique. Mais ça veut dire quoi Ça veut dire que, pourquoi on avait fait cette directive sur le tabac C'était diminuer la consommation par rapport aux jeunes. Et qu'est-ce qu'on autorise on, en, on autorise des arômes les plus sexy possibles pour attirer les jeunes au vapotage. Alors, autant on a interdit les arômes dans le cas du tabac, et là, on autorise les cigarettes électroniques à utiliser énormément d'arômes. Et vous l'avez dit vous-même, il y a plus de 25% des jeunes qui vapotent à l'heure actuelle. Alors, moi, je veux bien que quand quelqu'un veut arrêter de fumer, qu'il utilise la cigarette électronique, et j'attends les études qui montrent qu'il décroche vraiment là-dessus, mais au niveau des jeunes, on va complètement à l'encontre. Et ça bénéficie à, si, à qui Ça bénéficie, bien sûr, aux producteurs de tabac. Donc je trouve que là-dessus, il faut que vous soyez plus draconien. Et regardez les États-Unis, maintenant, ils interdisent l'utilisation des arômes. Donc au niveau de la Commission, il faut dire on interdit l'utilisation des arômes si on veut faire en sorte à ce que les jeunes ne vapotent pas. Alors, après, vous avez confié ça aux États membres. Moi, je regarde la France. La France est le deuxième utilisateur de cigarettes électroniques après les, les USA, hein. Eh bien, la France, l'usage, parce qu'il y a deux molécules qui sont problématiques dans les liquides, enfin, dans la cigarette électronique, c'est le diacétyl et le pentadnédion 2,3. Eh bien, la France l'a interdit, le diacétyl, parce qu'elle a constaté que ça entraînait des problèmes au niveau pulmonaire. Alors, vous avez quand même délégué aux États membres, et la France a la chance d'avoir des agences, vous voyez, qui ont des experts, mais les autres pays... Donc, vous voyez qu'on encourage l'utilisation de ces substances et vous voyez bien qu'on ne s'est pas donné les moyens de l'utilisation de ces substances. Donc, moi, je demande à la Commission quelles mesures, beaucoup plus draconiennes que ce que vous avez dit, euh, vous allez prendre sans attendre la révision de la directive sur le tabac. Interdire les arômes dans la cigarette électronique, si on veut éviter que nos jeunes fument, encore faut-il être draconien, vraiment plus faire des études sur les additifs et surtout qu'on utilise les recharges, mais qu'elles soient confinées. Parce que pourquoi il y a des morts aux états unis Parce que c'est eux-mêmes qui font leur mélange. C'est-à-dire qu'on a joué sur la personnalisation de l'utilisation de la cigarette électronique. Et il faut que les choses soient beaucoup plus draconiennes. En France, on n'a pas le droit de faire des mélanges. Et puis, il faut contrôler Internet, parce qu'il y a beaucoup de choses qui passent par Internet. Donc là, il y a urgence. Hein Gracias, señora Rivas. Sí, no hay límite de tiempo, pero conviene no hablar tampoco más tiempo que la propia comisión. Bien, por parte del ICR, el señor eh, Fiocchi tiene la palabra. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, thank you very much for the, for the possibility of talking. Uh, I'm an engineer, so I, I would like to have uh, some better dates. Uh, I've uh, uh, read uh, 24 different academic studies on the issue of uh, vaping uh, and other form of uh, smoking. And uh, in reality, what I can say is that uh, there is everything and the opposite of everything. So before we take a decision, I would like to have uh, a real uh, scientific study regarding uh, uh, what is this issue. Uh, can we use this to reduce smoking, or uh, is this an uh, actual danger for the teenager that use this to start using the vaping and everything else and, and get actually in trouble from a physical point of view? Uh, so I would like to see the Commission to uh, start uh, a real scientific study on this issue. Thank you. Gracias, señor Fiocchi. La última palabra que tenemos solicitada en la mesa is the group of the Socialists and Democrats, the Senora Saldemosa. Thank you very much. I, I have no Danish translation today, so I will speak in English. Uh, 
First of all, I realize that it can be maybe difficult to make a decision in the Commission on how to act in this area uh, due to lack of, of real uh, solid uh, scientific uh, documentation on the consequences. However, I have to say that uh, a lot of the European cancer societies, they are in fact recommending a much stronger approach to e-cigarettes and uh, heated tobacco. Doesn't that make any kind of uh, impression in the Commission? Uh, in order to consider a stronger approach. Uh, I realize that you have left it up to the member states to, to do things here, but wouldn't it be better also due to, first of all, health questions, but also for, for the inter internal market to, to have a common European approach and have a stronger approach, even base that approach on the precautionary principle uh, and, and start banning uh, e-cigarettes uh, and then Later on, if we have better uh, knowledge, then we can maybe open up again if it shows that there are no uh, negative health uh, impacts. So my question is, does it make an Im uh, impression to you that the cancer societies uh, throughout Europe recommend a stronger approach to this? Thank you. Gracias, señora Sandemosa. Y ahora, por parte de la comisión, tiene de nuevo la palabra el señor Riz. Thank you very much. I, I would do my best to, to answer a number of, of uh, concerns raised by a member of parliament. So let me start maybe answering first to uh, Ms. Guthorn. Uh, so when you, <clears throat> when you see statistics, of course, you know, we, we, we base on the, on, the, on the barometer study from 2017 and, and uh, there was a question was asked about the, the use of, of uh, electronic cigars by young, young people, so most probably when uh, we are reflecting now on the final questions for the barometer 2020, so this question, you know, is this the, the first time <coughs> you use only electronic cigarettes, or this was very, maybe they were experimenting with cigarettes and, and electronic cigarettes together, so this, this maybe we can, we can try to clarify with uh, researchers how, how, addressed, uh, how we can address better this, uh, this, this, this question. Uh, there is a, as, as we know, the, 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 the history of this directive, uh, the, the, the first commission proposal was much more uh, restrictive, may, may, may say, concerning the electronic cigarettes, was more measures on the, on the EU level. And uh, we, we went through the whole process and we end up with the, with the solutions we, we have now in place which is a mixture of, of, of harmonization on the, on the EU level with, the, of course, uh, uh, availability of, 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 of measures by, by member states. And, uh, and I think the incident or, or situation crisis in the US triggered a number of, of member states to, 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 to take this a little bit much, much more stronger than, than, than before. So, so, so we see already the as already mentioned, the discussion about the, the banding of flavors, it's, it's going on. One country did this. We see that maybe two, three are coming in a in, 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 in few, few months. Uh, we see also the, the, the quite interesting uh, activities concerning, for example, messages to parents and school and teachers explaining basically what is the electronic cigarettes as a, as a, as a product and what, what can create to, to children or young people. Uh, at the same time, we, 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 we have seen also some, some new idea about the packaging, taxation, so, so, so it's an it's a, it's a, it's a ongoing, ongoing process. On the research, you know, we, we, we try hard, you know, to, to, in one hand, you know, the scientific committee, what they, what they are doing now, they, they try to, to get as many evidence as possible from all available sources, from EU researchers, from member states, uh, base uh, research, from our cooperation with US FDA, from Japan, so, so we, we really are building, you know, the, the evidence, you know, and, and, and of course this issue is not uh, problem in, in Europe, but, but, uh, but around the globe. Simultaneously, uh, WHO, FD, uh, FCTC, as secretariat also are triggering the, the similar exercise. So, so evidence is, is built, and, of, and, and we, we, may, we may see, in, in, in hopefully in, in, in near future, 
um, is also answering to a number of other other questions. You know, this 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 balance evidence. You know, what is working, what is not working. Is a uh, remember the, one of the question we asked uh, to the scientific committee about the cessation. So so is is better a way to 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 quick cigar uh, smoking because of electronic cigarettes. This evidence is also has to be checked because there are many. Articles and studies, but but the, the, this is not not uh, one conclusive, uh, which we can base our our decision in future. Uh, of course, in our decisions, we commission is, is is implementing what was agreed by council and parliament, the commission finally. So we have the framework. We 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 we, we do what 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 we have on our on our plate. Uh, we, of course, assess the situation in the U.S., answering also to Dr. Lise. Uh, so the, the for, according to the U.S. study, when the, around the beginning was not very clear you know, how, to, how to assess those cases because the clinical evidence in the beginning was also very, very difficult to, to agree by, by, by clinicians, you know, how this is linked to the product or to other other uh, situations and uh, finally the conclusion is that uh, most probably the results in lung um, uh, problems were res resulted by a combination of the of the use of vitamin uh, in the in the in the in the liquids but also uh, some uh, cannabis uh, you know, in the in the in the in the in the simultaneously so so this was uh, also the, the size of the, of the, of the uh, containers were different. You know, in Europe we are regulating; we are basically not allowing to use the big, big, uh, big containers, which of course was the situation before uh, regulation was put in place. So the, the U.S. continued to do the, the additional work to understand better this. Uh, in Europe, we, we trigger our um, uh, also alert system uh, to, to see the, if we, if we can, can define uh, evidence. In, in one hand, uh, that we have RAPEX system, which is by, by, by uh, definition controlling the consumer goods, and, and this was not, not notification in RAPEX. Uh, we use also our system, which is used for the health incidence control for health threats. This was no notification. The Belgium case was imported from the U.S., if I, if I may say so. So this was the, the patient which was uh, using this, uh, this product in, in, in the U.S., as I understand. So we had some suspect cases, but, uh, but there was not confirmed in the, in the clinical assessment. So, so we, in answer... Uh, we don't have the, the similar situation in the U.S. Most of there, there are different, many other reasons we, we couldn't uh, really research. Uh, so, what uh, what kind of loopholes in the in the in the member states? You know, member states are implementing this regulation. You know, uh, everyone is doing this. You know, its way. But at the same time, they have chance to to meet together. We have expert group. And also joint actions when experts can exchange information about the way they are implementing different provisions of the legislation, and not just for electronic cigarettes, but also for the heated tobacco, but the other uh, areas like, 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 like placement of tobaccos or advertisements, so on, so smoke-free environment. So, so we try to make sure that, that there is exchange of, 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 of knowledge uh, across continent, allowing uh, also learn from each other and use the provision of legislation to, to make this possible. But same time, of course, we try to, to research, you know, how tobacco consumption and the whole market is, is, it looks like. Just give you a number, you know, in the database, which is... Uh, established under this directive, we have 253,000 notification of the products, because we are speaking not about, only about electronic cigarettes, but many other devices that are produced by different companies to, to, be, to be used in you know, combination with those, with those products. So it's a relatively uh, huge market with uh, very uh, many, many uh, variations. Uh, so we, we would like to... Uh, now about the, how, how this product can access uh, single market. As I explained, uh, 
that every company which is placing product on the market should notify this to the, to the, to the authority in, in advance, six months in advance. So it's not possible to start to sell this product without, uh, without information, but also they provide additional information on the products, of course, and member states has right, they have rights to assess you know, what, is, what is in product or ask additional questions, especially novel tobacco. Uh, they may ask additional evidence from the company what, uh, what is known to the company from, uh, from, uh, from, from uh, studies companies have done. So this, we know that it was, it's happened in the, in the member states already. Uh, to Madame uh, Rivazi question, or the, yeah, heated tobacco is a, is a tobacco product. It's not electronic cigarettes. I think it's important to say this because, you know, often we, uh, in the, uh, taxation classification after a whole discussion in the international community of um, uh, tax officers they, they decided finally to have this under electronic cigarettes the same group as electronic cigarettes this is why we also triggered this question through FCTC and COP to really understand you know what is the convention product what is this product you know and then we, would like, we really would like to get the answer from uh, FCTC secretary by summer and understand better the nature of this product. Also to harmonize the global, global knowledge and global evidence uh, concerning the heated tobacco and novel, novel product. Uh, could be directive more restrictive, uh, and also uh, Madame Sande must ask, can we bunt and wait? There are countries they decided to ban electronic cigarettes, for example. I think India is, is one of those, you know, which, which basically said we ban. But of course, you know, it's a, it's a different process. I don't think we, in this moment of time, uh, it, it's, first it's, it's, we don't have this in, in our legislation. This is, this is something which uh, also should base on proportionality and, and other, other uh, measures. Uh, can we? Can we move, move quicker with member states? It's, it's uh, you know, from the Commission side, you know, our role is to, to be guardian of legislation, act in the emergency situation, but also bring knowledge to the member states and share knowledge across, across member states. This is what we are doing. We feel that member states are now much more uh, interested to, to act. Uh, most probably uh, situation in the U.S. was was an additional trigger, uh, but final decisions, you know, about what to do should base on the evidence we'll be able to gather in the next few months. As I said, we still believe that we'll be able to 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 send a, a report uh, of the implementation of the directive to you by uh, next spring, and there's hopefully there'll be enough evidence to have uh, discussion about uh, what to do. Next. Thank you very much. Muy bien, pues gracias, señor Ries, y a todos los intervinientes en este punto de orden del día. Pasamos ahora a los puntos 17 y 18 que se debaten de manera conjunta. Se tratan de dos <coughs> informes especiales del Tribunal de Cuentas: uno sobre cuentas económicas medioambientales. Otro sobre notificación de las emisiones de gases de efecto invernadero en la Unión Europea. En primer lugar, por un tiempo de diez minutos y en representación del Tribunal de Cuentas, tiene la palabra el señor Joao Figueiredo.